Hi guys, Bert Kammerer here with SAB Heli Division and today I'm going to be giving you some tips uh, on how to assemble your Goblin helicopter as well as uh, tips on how to maintain your Goblin helicopter. Uh, we get a lot of questions all the time from a lot of different people about various aspects of the Goblin machine and uh, we've decided to sort of put everything together. Uh, I guess the most important tips on how to assemble as well as how to maintain your helicopter and also things to keep in mind and keep on check at all times. Uh, also very important after you, you've gone through a crash and you're rebuilding your machine. So basically we came up with a list and it's available for download. It's basically a PDF file. You can download it from the Goblin Helicopter website at the URL you see on the screen. Basically what it does is it once again outlines some of the most important things to keep in mind at all times with the Goblin Helicopter. And I'm just basically going to give you an overview of uh, each one of these uh, topics here. Alright guys, let's start talking about uh, the main linkage of the Goblin Helicopter. Uh, as you guys know, the Goblin Helicopter has a DFC head. DFC stands for Direct Flight Control. Um, and basically what that does is that eliminates the need for a swash driver, a swash follower. With this being said, the DFC head works very well, but it has to be set up correctly. It has to be Loctited. It has to be 100% uh, the way it's supposed to be. Um, the dampening needs to be tight, etc. And I'm going to talk to you about all the critical parts, all the critical things to keep in mind uh, with regards to the main linkage and the head. Let's start with the actual main linkage itself. As you look at the main linkage, you have these little arms right here. Uh, arms are uh, part number is HC0033. Basically, uh, what you do is you have a uh, small set screw. It's a uh, it's a 2.5 by 15 set screw. It's part number HC146. Make sure that the set screw is like strongly tightened onto this part. It has to be. Um, basically, if the set screw is not tightened correctly, um, or if it's just a little bit loose, then it's going to come off in flight. And then what happens is, as the, the ball link backs out, it'll actually get weak and it'll fatigue and break in flight. So make sure that this set screw is tightened all the way and you want to definitely use some thread lock in there. Um, also, when you insert the bow link into this uh, set screw, make sure that you insert the bow link and you start tightening all the way up until you see the letter A, only the letter A sticking out. Um, this is also very important. If you don't screw the bow link all the way up, uh, you're not going to have, number one, enough threads engaging into the bow link. And number two, uh, the bow link is just not going to be at the right length. But the important thing is to have enough thread. Uh, the bow link has to go deep inside into the threads to strengthen the bow link it itself. If you don't do this, you might run the chance of breaking this bow link in flight, which will lead to a catastrophic failure. Um, one other important, very important thing here is, is that these two parts, the H, H0033 and H0032, as you can see, these parts have to have a little bit of play. Um, I've seen people try to eliminate this play. They'll try to shim it or they'll, they'll try to put like a, a nut or something in there to remove the play. Don't do this. Uh, this is not what you definitely, not what you want to do. Um, the play is, is necessary. Uh, if you get rid of this play, you can certainly uh, cause some DFC head failure for sure. Um, as the blade grips deflect due to uh, dampening, it, you want something to absorb that deflection. And finally, make sure you're using the right screws to attach these parts onto the blade grips. Uh, this is very important. Make sure they're, uh, they're Loctite, make sure they're tight. If these come loose, uh, this can certainly lead to some sort of bolt failure and, and of course, a boom strike afterwards. Um, as you can see, there's one for the Goblin 600, 630, and there's one for the Goblin 700. They're different parts. Just make sure that they're tightened onto the blade grip arm um, and they're locked tight it correctly. Let's talk now a little bit about dampening, head dampening. I get literally hundreds of questions from people that want to know a little bit more about how the dampening should be on the Goblin helicopter. It's quite simple. On any DFC head, whether it is 
uh, our head or any other manufacturers, if the head is DFC, your dampening has to be really, really, really tight. There's just no other way around it. Um, that's, uh, DFC has a lot of advantages, but that is, I guess you could say one disadvantage that you have to run a very, very tight head. And the way the Goblin dampeners work is they, they, they dampen based on preload, meaning how much you compress these dampeners. The more you compress the dampeners, the tighter the head will be. The less you compress the dampeners, the looser the head will be. The goal is to have enough preload, enough compression in the system to tighten the head really, really, really tight. And basically what you do is when you look at your helicopter like this with the blades on and you go like this and you try to rock it side to side, you want to see practically absolutely almost no, if anything, no teetering action whatsoever. You, you don't want to be able to move this and rock it back and forth. You want it as tight as it can be. What happens is because of certain tolerance differences when the head is assembled at the factory, you're going to find out that Maybe your head is perfect. Maybe you have absolutely no dampening and it's really tight. Uh, maybe your head is just a little bit loose. This is completely normal. We're just talking about tolerances. There's a lot of different shims, a lot of different parts that make up the whole assembly of the head block or hub and the blade grips. And a tiny little bitty variations in tolerances can cause some heads to be a little bit more tight than others. So what do you do if your head is loose? Very simple. Just simply take one blade grip apart, remove the other blade grip with the spindle and put more shims in there. In the kit you will find extra shims in bag number 14. Uh, these are 0.2 millimeter shims. Just add one on each side, retighten everything and check again. If you need to add another shim, don't be afraid about it. Just add another shim. The goal here is to be able to do this and not see any, any, any movement on the head. There's no such thing as excessive preload. In other words, if you put way too many shims and the head is extremely, extremely tight, the only drawback is, is that if you try to fly the goblin at low head speed, you're going to see a wobble. Basically, the, the tail of the helicopter will start doing this in a hover. That is the only drawback. Um, other than that, there's absolutely nothing uh, that could go wrong if you preload the head excessively. Again, this is uh, a requirement for any DFC head, no matter what brand it is, no matter who makes it, you always have to tighten the head uh, as much as you can. Um, again, there's no drawbacks. Uh, if it's ex extremely tight and you have a little bit of a wobble, then maybe remove one shim and try again. The most important thing though is to keep a check on this. Uh, ask the Goblin helicopter when it's brand new and everything is literally new, the dampers have a certain amount of, uh, uh, they give to a certain degree. So once you assemble the helicopter, the head might feel really, really tight. But after you go and you put two, three, five heart 3D flights, the head might loosen up a little bit. What I recommend at that time is you remove, once again, remove the blade grips, put another shim, try it again and keep flying. Eventually, it will not loosen up anymore. Eventually, the compressibility of the damper sort of comes to an end and the damper settles into that preload and you will not have to mess with it ever again. But when your helicopter is brand new or after you've changed dampers, after a heart uh, crash and a rebuild, you might want to check this at least obviously before your first flight and then after you've put five to ten flights, maybe again after another five to ten flights and uh, add more shims if necessary and eventually once again, like I said before, the the dampers, the preload and the, the actual preload on the dampers will settle and you won't have to mess with it ever again. But that is very important. Now, I have people that ask me, what do I do if I want to fly low head speed and I have this, this crazy wobble? Well, there's nothing much you can really do with the DFC head. Uh, I've flown the head in a very tight uh, configuration, as low as about 1750 on the head and it's been okay. Uh, on other goblins that the head is even tighter and the preload is even harder, I can only go down to about 1850. If you want to fly at much lower head speeds, yes, you can loosen up your dampening, but your flying has to be extremely, extremely, I guess you could say, non-aggressive. Uh, you don't want to make any sudden, crazy stick movements. You don't want to push the helicopter really hard because now with all this dampening, you're putting a lot of stress on your DFC system. So 
Uh, I personally don't recommend it. Um, I would actually be happy if you guys run a very tight head and refrain yourselves from flying at low head speeds. We are working on a non-DFC option that will be available in the future. Uh, for those of you who do not care for DFC, it will be sold separately as an option. Um, but for now, if you have a Goblin, please make sure your dampening is really, really tight. Let's move on and talk a little bit about uh, motor belt tension. The motor belt tension in the Goblin is not extremely critical, but it is certainly important. Uh, you can extend the life of your motor belt if you write the proper tension. Um, basically, as you know, there's some springs in the motor mount. As you loosen up the motor mount itself, the springs will try to keep the motor uh, at a certain tension. Uh, what you need to do is just very simple. That tension is the tension you want. But basically what you want to do is you want to kind of help the motor, hold the motor as you tighten the bolts to make sure that that tension stays in place. I've seen people just let the springs create the tension and start tightening, but as they tighten, the motor moves a little bit and the, ten the springs don't have enough force to hold on to that tightening or that torque that you're applying to the screws to tighten the motor mount. And then what happens is the motor belt loosens up. Another thing I've seen a lot of people do is they actually start tightening, they insert the belt and then they start tightening, but the belt has not seated all the way yet. So the first time the motor spins, the belt actually finds its right position, and now the belt tension is too loose. Make sure, make sure the belt is seated correctly. Make sure you're holding onto the motor to help those springs uh, have the proper tension, and then go ahead and tighten it. Another thing that's important is the belt alignment. I've seen some of these that are not aligned properly, and what I do myself, and this kind of looks funny, but I just basically get under the blades and I start turning the motor like this and I allow it to turn and turn and turn several times and what that does is that allows the belt to find its right position. If the belt is too high then simply loosen up the pulley and the motor and drop it like a millimeter or so. If the belt is too low loosen up the pulley and the motor and raise it a millimeter or so and then do this again and then start turning the motor and then just Turn it several times until the belt finds its sweet spot and then look at it again. You want to have it as close to the proper alignment as possible. Alright, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tilt belt tension this time. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this. Actually, I was at Urcha um, last week and I saw a bunch of guys with their goblins that were running the belt tension a little bit too loose for their flying style. In the manual, it shows that the idler pulley right here should be in basically aligned with the frame. Uh, every uh, idler pulley is different. Uh, obviously, the springs don't have exactly the same tension, the same resistance, all of them. There's thousands of springs out there. There's variations in all of them. So the bottom line is use your common sense. If you're a pilot who is into basic forward flight or scale flying or even basic sport flying, you can get away with a relatively loose tail belt. If you're a pilot that is into heart, heart 3D, please tighten up your tail belt. Um, my tail belt is really, really tight. And as, as you look at the uh, idler pulley, it's actually sticking out of the frames by a few millimeters. So just use your common sense here. One symptom that your tail belt is too loose is you'll hear the tail belt hitting the boom in flight. And because of the shape of the boom, it sort of acts like a megaphone. So it amplifies that sound. Make sure that your tail belt is tight the way it's supposed to be. This is, again, very important. And then moving on to the tail, uh, make sure that the tail output shaft is perpendicular to the boom. Um, you can make a mistake here if you loosen up these bolts too much and turn the, uh, the actual uh, tail case a little bit. Make sure this is as perpendicular to the tail boom as possible. And always keep an eye on these four bolts that hold the tail case to the boom. Uh, this is very important. I've seen some people have these loosen up in flight and sometimes it can cause some problems, of course, because it'll change your belt tension. And then finally, make sure that you're loctiting the set screw here that holds the pulley to the tail output shaft. Once again, I've seen people uh, have that set screw back out and lose tail uh, in flight. This could be very dangerous as you might not be able to control the helicopter.
Main shaft and main gear. Let's talk about the main shaft very briefly. Nothing to do here other than to make sure that you have no play. Uh, what I've seen is goblins out there that have up and down play on the main shaft. Very easy. Loosen up the collar right here below the, the mother plate as I call it. Push the main shaft down through the hub. Push the, uh, the collar up itself. Retighten it. You should be able to get rid of all the slop. Uh, should be absolutely zero slop up and down on the main shaft. Main gear. Main gear is very strong, especially with the stainless, with the steel pinion. Uh, the, the main gear can take certainly take a beating. Um, we recommend using a little bit of synthetic grease every 30 to 40 flights or so, just to keep it lubricated. But uh, it's a very strong material. The, the goal of the the, tri the synthetic grease is just to keep the temperature low. Although this gear can handle very very high temperature, um, very very high temperature and a lot of friction. Last but not least, blades. Uh, how tight do your blades need to be? You know, this kind of goes back to the main linkage and the main and the dampening and all that. It's, it's part of the DFC system in a way. You don't want to run loose blades because loose blades will lead or lag and fall out of track. Uh, will not run uh, in a straight line with respect to your blade grip and it can cause serious problems. It can actually even lead to a boom strike. How tight do I run my blades? I just use common sense. What you want is to be able to do this, just like that. You don't want the blades to be moving and swinging around and stuff. Um, that's basically all I do. I just make sure that when I do this very violently, that the blades are not moving. Um, so just use your common sense. These are pretty tight right here, so you can see, um, but they're not, extremely tight. I could probably run them a little bit looser than that, but I like them pretty tight like that. You don't want to lock them in too tight either because when you spool the helicopter up on the ground, if they're not swung out all the way, then the helicopter will start doing this on the ground before it actually before the blades actually straighten themselves out. So you want to kind of use common sense. Not too loose, not too tight. I hope these tips are useful when uh, maintaining or assembling your new goblin helicopter or even rebuilding your goblin helicopter. Remember to keep these things in check at all times. You always want to make sure your dampening is correct, you want to make sure your belt tension is correct in the motor as well as in the tail belt. Um, just as you saw throughout this video, uh, there's a lot of little different things that you got to keep in mind. Uh, please note that you can minimize failures. Uh, practically eliminate failures 100% if you keep all these little tips and tricks in mind at all times. So thanks again for watching.